Hello friends, today we will be discussing about the threatened abortion. Threatened abortion is a condition during pregnancy that suggests a miscarriage might occur before the 20th week of gestation. It is characterized by vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain or cramping but the cervix remains closed and the fetus is still viable. As nurses, it is crucial to understand the signs, causes and appropriate interventions to support and educate patients experiencing this distressing condition. The role of nurse includes providing emotional support, monitoring the patient's condition and educating them about the importance of rest, avoiding sternness activities and adhering to medical advice. Nurses also play a critical role in collaborating with the healthcare team to ensure timely and effective treatment which may involve bed rest, medication or other interventions aimed at preventing miscarriage. Understanding the risk factors and early signs of threatened abortion can help in prompt identification and management, thereby potentially improving the outcomes for both the mother and the fetus. By staying informed and compassionate, nurses can make a significant difference in the care and reassurance provided to patients facing this challenging situation. First, we'll see the definition of threatened abortion. So, the definition goes like this. It is a clinical entity where the process of abortion has started but has not progressed to a state from which recovery is impossible. So, the definition, the meaning goes like this. Where the process of abortion has been started but it has not progressed to the state. So, it says that there is one more state there. So, that state may be an inevitable abortion. So, it has not progressed to the state from which recovery is impossible. So, when you speak about this definition or when you are going to understand defi this definition, it has, uh, uh, it has said that the process of abortion has been started, but it has not met the other state. That is, it has not progressed to the state. So, the other state sta says that, that uh, like inevitable abortion, that state we can call it as inevitable abortion, there the recovery is impossible. But here in threatened abortion, the recovery is possible. Moving on to the clinical features of threatened abortion. First, we will see the symptoms. Period of amenorrhea. Of course, there is a period of amenorrhea. So, the height of fundus or the uterine size is in relation to the period of amenorrhea where you are calculating by LMP that is last menstruation period. So, based on that calculation, you can see that the height of the fundus or the growth of the uterus is uh, in equal with a period of amenorrhea. So, that is there, the period of amenorrhea. Scanty bright red bleeding of blood stain discharge. A scanty, a little, a bright red bleeding can be seen in case of threatened abortion. The third symptom is no abdominal pain, but at times you can see a lower abdominal pain, just like how you feel a, feel a pain during the time of periods. A period like discomfort can be experienced by a lady. And of course, there is no history of expulsion of any fleshy lump. So, these are the symptoms which you can see. So, period of amenorrhea, scanty bright red bleeding or blood stain discharge, no abdominal pain but at times lower abdominal period like discomfort, no history of expulsion of any fleshy lump. The signs which you can see is per abdomen and by manual examination, the gravid uterus is felt soft and large corresponding to the period of amenorrhea. On speculum and vaginal palpation, the cervical os remains closed, a stain discharge is present. The strain discharge or the bleeding, a slight bleeding or which we call it as spotting. So, it has been said that it may be the reason the placenta trying to burrow itself into the lining of the womb causing some blood vessels to bleed. So, this may be the cause of spotting in case seen in threatened abortion. Regarding the investigations, what are the investigations you have to perform? Blood for hemoglobin, blood grouping and RH typing, 
blood transfusion may be required urgently if abortion becomes inevitable so once it is threatened abortion we cannot completely say that the pregnancy is going to continue it may be on the other side it may continue or it may land up into an inevitable abortion once it lands up into an inevitable abortion there may be a chance of bleeding and for that reason the blood transfusion is essential so it's essential that the blood uh, has to be kept ready for that reason you have to do the hb blood grouping and typing urine for immunological test of pregnancy this is done to confirm the fetal death in case of continued bleeding so you have to do a urine for immunological test you have to go for scg test however the test remains positive for a variable period even after the fetal death so you cannot say immediately there is a drop of scg it remains positive for few days even after the fetal death so these are the investigation which has to be performed moving on to the special investigation a well formed gestational ring, ring with central echoes from the embryo indicating the healthy fetus observation of the fetal cardiac motion with this there is 98% chance of continuation of the pregnancy so if you find the fetal cardiac uh, movements uh, that is cardiac activity you can say that a well formed gestational ring can be seen in the ultrasound so it indicates this is a threatened abortion and there is 98% chance of continuation of the pregnancy but 2% is still in question mark a blighted ovum is evidenced by loss of definition of the gestational sac diameter absent fetal echoes and absent fetal cardiac movement so in case of blighted ovum it is de, uh, it is evidenced by the ultra sonography you can see uh, no uh, fetal echoes and absent fetal cardiac movements and um, loss of uh, definition of the gestational sac diameter so this is a feature which you can see in usg uh, for blighted ovum the blighted ovum is nothing but it is an empty ovum moving on to the treatment of threatened abortion so first and the foremost is bed rest the patient should be in bed for few days until bleeding stops and also it is said that prolonged restriction of activity has got no therapeutic value so the long long stay of sleeping in the bed for a long time it doesn't have any therapeutic value however you can uh, just keep in mind that with the history of previous early pregnancy wastage the period of rest should be extended up to about two weeks beyond the period at which the previous wastage occur so if the patient is having a previous history of abortion and what was the reason of abortion so you have to collect an obstetrical history of the patient and if uh, she had an abortion at around 10 weeks so similarly she is experiencing a spotting uh, during this pregnancy also at that time of course the bed rest has to be advised to the patient and as she had a, a, a abortion at 10 weeks during her previous pregnancy here you are going to add up two more weeks to her bed rest so um, till the bleeding stops or uh, 10 plus 2 that is almost 12 weeks she should be on the uh, bed rest so that is a, a concept behind this so that's about the bed rest the drugs which are advised here is phenobarbiton 30 mg or diazepam 5 mg tablet twice daily which is a sedative mild laxative that is milk of magnesia 4 teaspoon bedtime if needed to avoid straining during the passing stool so she should not apply pressure she should not strain during passing stool and that's the reason a mild laxatives can be given to the patient at bedtime and make sure that you should not give enema to the patient so the sudden pressure of passing the stool or uh, uh, not passing the stool at that time constipation she is applying still the pressure on the rectum so this has to be avoided so either you have to give a mild laxatives and you should not go for enema moving on to the general measures which has to be kept in mind the general measures include the patient is advised to preserve the vulval pads and anything expelled out per vaginum for inspection so suppose she is at home or even in the hospital she has to preserve her pads so that uh, it can be visualized by the medical uh, practitioners the doctors or the nurses whoever uh, whoever is there uh, taking care of her in the hospital to report if bleeding 
or pain becomes aggravated routine note of pulse temperature and vaginal bleeding has to be done moving on to the next plan that is progesterone progesterone is the most important hormone for the maintenance of a early human pregnancy besides progesterone administration hcg also that is human chorionic gonadotrophic hormone also is a logical endocrine treatment of choice in the pregnant women hcg stimulates and optimizes hormonal production in the corpus luteum and may also influence the feto placental unit So what's this progesterone? The progesterone is essential to achieve and maintain a healthy pregnancy. It is an endogenous hormone secreted naturally by the corpus luteum and placenta during the early pregnancy. So what is this HCG? That is human chorionic gonadotrophy hormone is a hormone which is produced primarily by the syncytiotrophoblast cells of the placenta during pregnancy. The hormone stimulates the corpus luteum to produce progesterone to maintain the pregnancy. It helps thicken a person's uterine lining to support a growing embryo and tells the body to stop the menstruation. You can just have a look of HCG levels during pregnancy. Finally, advice on discharge. So what you are going to adv advise in case of threatened abortion? Limit activities at least for two weeks and avoid heavy works. Avoid sternness exercise and excitement. Coitus is contraindicated during this period. She should be examined after one month to note the growth of uterus and advise to consult the physician if bleeding recurs. So we have seen today regarding the threatened abortion that is the definition the clinical features in that symptoms and signs investigation the special investigations what you have to do the treatment mainly the bed rest and certain drugs and what general measures has to be followed and what is an advice on discharge in conclusion Threatened abortion is a condition that demands prompt recognition and careful management by nurses and the health care team. As frontline caregivers, nurses play a pivotal role in providing both physical and emotional support to patients experiencing this challenging situation. The key responsibility include monitoring vital signs, managing symptoms, offering reassurance and educating patients on preventive measures and follow-up care. Effective nursing care can significantly impact the outcomes of threatened abortion by reducing anxiety, promoting adherence to medical advice and fostering a supportive environment for the patient. By staying informed about the latest evidence-based practices and maintaining a compassionate approach, the nurses can help mitigate the risk associated with threatened abortion and contribute to the overall well-being of the patient and the fetus. Continued education and training in obstetric care are essential for nurses to stay updated on the best practices and interventions for managing threatened abortion. By doing so, the nurses can enhance their competency and confidence in handling such cases, ultimately leading to better patient outcomes and improved quality care. So we have come to the end of this topic that is threatened abortion. I hope this content was informative for you. If you have any questions, you can put it down in the comment section. Thank you.